Finding the answers on how to restore decimated sea otter populations are coming from an unlikely place, their poop. This is a dried fecal sample from one of our sea otters, Nuka. The fur trade basically wiped out sea otter populations. Their numbers went from 100,000 all the way down to 1,000. Sean Larson and her team at the Seattle Aquarium spend a good part of their time studying otters' excrement. That's because it's a non-invasive way to get vital genetic information. We wanted to figure out, you know, what is the cycle of a sea otter and how often do they cycle? How often can they become pregnant? How long does the pregnancy last and all that kind of stuff? And so we started our sea otter conservation endocrinology project, which is a big long word for sea otter poop study. <laughs> so the only thing that we could get on a reliable basis without interacting with them at all is poop. Sean says wild otters aren't doing well. There's not a lot of genetic diversity in wild populations, and wild otters show high levels of stress, which can be seen in their feces. That's why chronic stress levels will cause problems over time, because basically you're, 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 you're changing the body to be one of constant, I'm ready to fight for my life, rather than I'm going to chill out and, and have a baby. Monitoring the population is important for reasons other than increasing the number of otters. Scientists say that otters serve as an indicator species. So they're like the canary in the coal mine because they need an abundant, productive ocean ecosystem. Pollution in the marine environment can have a very big impact on an animal that relies almost solely on their fur for warmth. So they're, they're a really important indicator of how things are going out in the ocean. In order to restore and breed otter populations, Sean's team collects sea otter fecal samples from their four resident otters. In addition, research labs from as far away as Europe send samples to be analyzed. And then we pick up a little net and we scoop up the poo when the otters poo. And everybody gets a good laugh at it, but it's important because the feces from a sea otter actually carries reproductive hormones in it. The poop is packed with estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and a stress-related hormone called corticosterone. All these hormones tell the scientist when the sea otter is ready to breed. Sean hopes in the next year or so, she'll be able to develop a one-sample pregnancy test for their sea otters, kind of like the tests that are available to humans now. For Discovery News, I'm Casey D. Gardner.